Today in the studio, I got a real treat for you folks. Timothy Sykes. Welcome. Thanks for having me, man. Now, everyone's going to be excited that you're here. For you that don't know who he is, dude, go check him out at Timothy Sykes on Instagram. Sykes is spelled S-Y-K-E-S, timothysykes.com. Folks, you probably have heard of him, but if you haven't, by the by the weirdest coincidence, this dude's like a freaking stock wizard. You're like the young Warren Buffett. <laughs> I don't know about that, but I've, I've done well. I'm happy. Is Warren Buffett your idol? No. He holds, he looks for value. I do the opposite. I'm very short term. I go with momentum. I'm just trying to trade the trend. You're so, just riding waves. Yeah, riding waves up and down and teaching people along the way. What about Munger? Same thing as Buffett? Same thing, right? Like they, they look for this quality. Maybe you can make millions over decades. I don't, I don't want to wait that long. You know, I made a million in a few years. My top students are making a few million in a few years. You just need the volatility, which we have in this market. So- this is basically stock trading. 100%. Penny stocks? Penny stocks, small cap stocks, <coughs> micro cap stocks, um, anything that's moving, you know, whether it's monkeypox stocks, COVID stocks, now, um, energy plays lately have been really hot too. Now, back before the old vid vid hit, um, I heard rumors that old Bill Gates owned Moderna. So I said, I'm going to buy Moderna. And Moderna went up. And yeah. then I sold. Um, is that all you do? I mean, somewhat, but you know, I'm not just guessing like big trends like that. I'm looking, I was. <laughs> yeah, and that worked. It, it works sometimes, you know, 2020, 2021, you could pretty much buy anything and you would have done very well. 2022, you need to be more intricate. You got to be meticulous. So I'm taking 10, 20, 30% profits. I'm not going for 200% profits in this current market. I'm always adapting. Are you, sh are you like looking at the little candlesticks and, and basing things off pasts and, and, and trends or how, how do you spot one? Cause you're buying these things no one's ever heard of sometimes. Yeah, no, 100%. I so look how do for, you know? Well, I look for the charts, but, you know, I use this software called Stocks to Trade, and they have breaking news. They're looking at different newsletters, um, different news wires, social media mentions, chat rooms galore. Um, there's like this day trading horde that's out there because a lot of people lost their jobs. They're working from home. Uh, they got into trading. They got their stimulus checks. They're opening up their Robinhood accounts. So there's a lot of people just looking for anything to gamble on from home. So you start to see these trends like monkeypox, Probably not going to be that bad in the real world, but for several days, the monkeypox stocks quadrupled. Because of the media. Because of the media. So you start to understand, wait a minute, it's not just about what's actually happening, it's the perception of what's happening. And so the media, everyone likes to hate on the media, but they're pretty predictable. You know, like right now with Roe v. Wade, I mean, this is going to be all that's talked about over the weekend. So but how, but how do you know like what stocks relate to Roe v. Wade? So I look for big percent gainers. I'm never the first one to see these stocks. I'm always looking for a stock that's up 10, 20, 30%. Uh, EVFM is a stock that I'm in right now. It's a female contraceptive company. It was up 35% uh, right when the news came out, dipped a little, it's up like 22%. I'm holding it over the weekend. Um, I find that a lot of the news travels over the weekend. The stock market is closed. So you create like a inefficiency where you buy a stock, let's say on a Friday, this is one of my favorite patterns. You look at all the media hype, all the social media hype over the weekend. Then people who think that they're early, they buy it on a Monday. Meanwhile, I'm in on Friday. I'm selling to the idiots on Monday. How do you know on Friday though? The news came out today. Today is a Friday when we're filming this. The news came out, but you know that journalists aren't the smartest or the sharpest or the fastest. So they're going to be writing articles all weekend long. Social media is going to be going crazy. Everyone's going to be looking for low price stocks or whatever is in play. EVFM, like I said, already spiked today on the news, but it came down. I think that there's going to be a day two. When you get a really big runner, it runs for two, three, four, five days. I'm not right every time. I can be wrong in any play. Rule number one is cut losses quickly. So I didn't chase it. I waited for the dip. And now I'm going to let social media and the media cycle do its thing over the weekend. So you're always in Italy. Uh, <laughs> I love Italy. I'm, I'm flying to France from here, from Vegas to France tomorrow. But what did you, uh, how, why'd you pick Italy? Um, I love Italy. I love food. I mean, this is why I wear black. I, I have a, a nice little belly under this black shirt. Have you eaten Italian food in Italy? Yes. Game changing, soul changing. It's crazy. Right? It's crazy. Dude, so, you know, like regular ass pasta is okay. delicious. Amazing. Because they have different ingredients, right? In America, we use so many like just bad ingredients. I know people that can't eat pasta in America. They eat it in Italy. They're fine. 
And it's like, wait a minute, there's something going on with the food here in America. Um, but I don't just travel to Italy. I mean, I'm doing Greece, Italy, France. I love Japan. Um, we were talking backstage, you know, we build schools. I was just in Bali in the Philippines, building schools there. Um, trying to do everything. I love, I love traveling and trading. That's the beauty of trading for me. It's not just about the money. It's the freedom. So I have my laptop. I got my laptop in my backpack there. I can trade from anywhere. How old are you? Uh, 41. So when did you start this? Uh, I was in high school. So 17, 18, back in 99. And was, did you, did you come from a family of traders or? No, no. I came from middle-class neighborhood, Orange, Connecticut. My parents gave me control of my bar mitzvah money, 12 grand. They thought I would lose it in the stock market. They thought it would be a good lesson for me, but I got really obsessed with charts and trying to grow it. Senior year of high school, I made basically a hundred thousand. So 12 grand into 120,000 to be exact. Um, and then freshman year, in college this was year 2000 right place right time i made over 700 grand and then i was hooked because i'm from a small town small family never traveled before now i have hundreds of thousands of dollars and i'm like what's going on and it's almost like you know dungeons and dragons I mean, it's a video game. A lot of my top students who make a lot, like they don't even speak in, in full sentences. Like I had four millionaires uh, here in my boot camp here in Vegas. And they're like, yeah, I made, you know, 1.9. And I'm like, say the full sentence, $1.9 million. And they can't say it because in their minds, they're just playing, they're playing a video game. Yeah. And you just, so no one taught you, you just started doing it. So I'm self-taught and I learned the hard way. I've had a million dollar loss along the way when I believed in these companies. Now I don't believe in these companies. I'm just there to ride the momentum. I, I expect the worst on every company. That way I'm never disappointed. It's kind of a cynical approach, um, but I don't fall in love with the technology. I don't fall in love with the sector. I'm specifically going for my profit. Then I'm out. And then how, I want to go eat pasta in Italy. How much money did you have when you lost a mill? Uh, basically 3 million. I had a hedge fund and I was way too cocky, never had a big uh, loss before. So that was my best educator. It was a terrible moment, but it would turn me into a much more conservative trader and teacher. Well, I'm crazy when it comes to risk tolerance. Like, you know, like to me, if you had a million and lost a million, that's risky. You had three, bro. <laughs> I mean, that was a lot for me. I'm, I, I trade volatile stocks, but I'm very conservative. My average loss is about one and a half to 2%. That's it. Damn. So I, I cut it very, very quickly. Cause I, again, I go in with a thesis. Like, I don't know exactly how the momentum is going to shift. Sometimes you're in a stock and you're buying a stock that's up. If the momentum shifts, you got to cut losses. I never hold and hope like a lot of these crypto people, they fell in love with the technology. Now they're down 70, 80, 90% for no reason, just due to a lack of discipline. That's sad. Well, the value's down compared to what it was, but like, I'm not down 70%. No, but off the highs, right? Off the highs. But you can learn to take profits into parabolic moves. And the only reason I'm not down is because someone gave me a bunch at 600 each. Well, that's fantastic. But you can also sell. And then guess what? If you're truly bullish on crypto or anything, you sell some. You don't even have to sell all, but just learn to take some profits. Then if it crashes, you can buy back and like triple your position size. Yeah. If you really believe in it. Do you? Do you so you don't like crypto, I can tell you. Um, I, th I like the technology. I appreciate the potential. There's a lot of scammers. I have a lot of imposters on social media. They all use crypto. You know, I say right now in 2022, crypto's main claim to fame is that they've united all the world's criminals. And in a divided world, that's pretty impressive, but that's the main usage of crypto so far. I think that there's so much potential. Like right now, right on the way over here, uh, there's news that Goldman Sachs might buy Celsius, which is, you know, one of the cryptos Goldman Sachs getting into the crypto game. Let's see what happens. Let's change the world. I like that. Well, digital currency, really. Yeah, hundred percent. But you know, in the past, Wall Street has been very anti-crypto. If you get this multi-billion-dollar new player involved, who knows what's possible? Solana just came out uh, with a Solana smartphone, and we're going to see what's going to go on with that. So, I love the idea of new technology, but again, for me, price action is king, and I always take profits. I usually take profits too soon. Like I said, I've made seven point four million. If I held all the way, I probably could have made like twenty million. But I would also have big losses along the way, which I don't like. So do you have the multiple screens? What does one person need before, other than the education and the knowledge? What, what do I need to get started? So I just use one laptop or one smartphone. I keep it very simple. Um, I know some traders have like five monitors, 10 monitors. I have an addictive personality, so I have to recognize that. I can eat a lot of pasta, but I don't want to take a lot of trades. Like if I have five monitors, I'm trading nonstop and I don't want that because 
I really think that there's one or two, maybe three good plays per day for somebody with a small account. I trade with a small account. I donate all my trading profits to charity because I want to teach people the process, regular people. What's a small account? Um, I start every year with $12,000. I go back to my starting roots and I try to grow that. So if I open an account with 12,000, how long do you think if I listened to everything you said and I, and I, you know, got lucky? Cause I'm sure there's some timing involved. Hundred percent. The harder work, the harder you work, the luckier you get. What's realistic time frame to make, turn that 12 into a mill? Probably like, I don't know, six, seven years, maybe eight years, but you're already busy. It's, it's, it's a small person's game with a small account, right? So if someone who's successful comes to me and says, I want to trade, I said, don't do it. It's not worth it. But this is for somebody with a lot of time who's maybe working at a job that they hate, uh, somebody who's in school, you know, a part-time worker, you can study an extra hour at night. It's also not just making a million. I have a lot of part-time students who might, might make like an extra hundred or a few thousand dollars riding the wave of something. Like people say, like, when are you going to retire? Why should I ever retire? There's always going to be these inefficiencies and opportunities. And for me, I'm just proud to kind of teach it in a cynical way, not to believe in the technology, not to fall in love, just to try to, you know, advance your wealth a little bit over time. Now you, you train people this, you have yeah. courses, groups, masterminds, hundred percent camps, 8,000 8, video lessons, 14 DVDs. I give webinars every week, watch lists every day, commentary. It's nonstop. And I'm sure you have testimonials of people that are freaking crushed it. I mean, my top student turned 1500 now into 15 million. He 1, started out 1,500 into 15 million, but it's been a decade. And now he's a full-time family man, has two great kids. Tim Grutani is his name. And so the students actually help me teach. So here, like I said, we have four new millionaires, just millionaires in the past two years, but now they're giving live webinars. They're teaching their strategy. You know, for all of us, we have different mindsets, different strengths and weaknesses. For me, I, you might be able to tell I'm not patient. Tim Grittani holds stocks for days or weeks. I have trouble holding a stock for more than like two days. And that's only when, you know, the stock market is closed over the weekend. So you got to try to find what works best for you. You got, you have to remember 90% of traders lose in any niche. So it's really tough to get ridiculously wealthy. It's, it's tough to even be profitable. So I'm just teaching basically degenerate gamblers discipline. It's, it's rules. It comes down to rules. Yeah. Well, again, I mean, you got to have a little bit of balls to do it, but you know, if you're not risking all of your savings, use you money that you can afford to lose. But at the same time, like crypto people say that like, Oh, if it goes down all the way, it's easy, come easy, go. But I think that even if it's money you can afford to lose, it doesn't mean that you have to lose it just because you're stubborn or you fall in love. Like I, like I said, I believe in the potential of crypto. It's just when it gets too high, you got to learn to take some profits. I don't like the fact that, you know, um, some people, I'm not even going to name people, but like some people double, triple, quadrupled big assets, like meaning 10 times their assets. Sometimes they didn't take any off. For me, as a disciplined trader, you got to take some off. Even if you just sell like one-tenth of your position, at least learn to take some profits because a profit is not a profit until you cash it in. There's a bomb. I've been forgotten. I've been forgetting to drop bombs. It's okay. It'll be a carpet bomb session. Whatever works, you know? So, so I'm listening to this. I'm interested. Um, Obviously, I can reach out to you and take your courses. If I take your courses and plug into your system, and they're not even expensive. That's what's crazy. Um, if I plug in and like pay attention, how many hours before I can start like being confident? I mean, I have a 30 day boot camp. That's the best place to start. And it's, you know, under 50 hours of studying. Um, but again, it's the stock market is not an exact science, right? So I'm not like a math teacher. I'm more like a history teacher. I'm a glorified history teacher teaching about the past to help you be better prepared right now, 2022, not the best market for big gains, but it's a great market to learn, to take small gains. And so it's learning the process. I say some years are better to earn like 2020, 2021, you could have bought anything, no rules whatsoever. It was a free for all 2022. You use that strategy, you get destroyed. So now you have to learn to take smaller gains and accept it. Like I made $1,600 yesterday. I was fine with that today. I didn't even close any trades. I'm fine with that. Small gains add up over time. Do you think crypto is going away? No, but I don't know what price is going to be valued at. That's the bigger question. What's it at right now? Uh, right now, Bitcoin's around 20,000, 21,000. Um, Ethereum has dropped, you know, down to basically a thousand down from 4,000 plus. Wow. 
NFTs, you're getting hit double because the currency is going down and the price of the NFTs are down. You just don't have to hold through that. Like, I just, I just want people to learn that they can trade. Like, it's not like, oh, you're an enemy of the cause you sold. This is what promoters say. Penny stock promoters say this crypto promoters say this. When something goes up too much, they say, don't sell only those who are weak sell. And I say, well, no, that's a hundred percent wrong. Like you should exit when something goes up too much. That's Absolutely. Just, that's just disciplined, solid trading rules. Even if you only sell like a third, but people go down with the ship, especially with penny stocks, because these promoters lure them in, whether it's weed penny stocks. I got in a whole fight with this whole group of people on Twitter that weed stocks were going to change the world. Listen, I appreciate weed stocks. I like the changing legalization, but at the same time, when a stock goes up 20, 50, a hundred times, take some fucking profits, man. Why not? You fall in love. It's really tough a, for people to not believe in the promoters, because especially if you kind of just don't have uh, self-esteem or you don't have a plan yourself, you just listen to the promoter, whatever the promoters say, you're beholden to them. I don't like that. All of my students become self-sufficient. I'm just like training wheels. When a student goes against me, I'm not like a promoter who's like, you're against me, you're my enemy. I say, good, you're thinking on your own. That's how it should be. What do you think about politicians who are aware of laws and they're allowed to inside trade? I mean, there's a lot of manipulation. There's a lot of um, just nasty stuff going on. But at the same time, I think there's always going to be scammers. There's always going to be manipulation. I like to focus on what's real, what's ethical, and what's predictable. But have you ever found kind of a, I guess I'm looking for some sort of, not a secret, but like, in other words, hey, you know what you do is you go, you know, find five legislators and you buy what they buy because they're sitting in these meetings. They're not getting busted for insider. That's insider trading. I don't care what anyone says. Well, what the, what they're doing is inside insider trading, but they're allowed to. It's hey, and I'm not loss. mad at them. Dude, go be a politician. It's go go loss. be one if, if you're mad at them. Like, you know, that's not fair. Well, fucking go be one. But they can do it. Yeah. So I'm thinking like one time I was thinking, you know, what if we just followed their buys? Yeah. Like, what did they buy? Because so, if I followed your buys, I would have won like you, correct? I mean, it's not exact because again, like we have different mindsets. Like I have very little patience. Some people have like a time frame of like, yeah, but three if weeks. I mirrored you, but everyone always wants to mirror these stocks move so quickly. I want you being self-sufficient. I want you seeing the stock before I do. I'm not, the well, that, best. that's the teacher in you. And I definitely want to get there. Yeah. But, but my, but my thought is like, if I just buy what you buy, sell when you sell, do what you do. If you won, I win. It's easier said than done. I do have one of my students, Mark Crook, who's closing in on $4 million. Uh, his strategy, what he's zeroed in on is what you're talking about, where he sees what insiders buy and sell. They publicly disclose it. It's not insider information. Um, he, and he looks and he sees like how good these insiders are because theoretically insiders have a little you know, more awareness than somebody else, how good or bad a company is doing. So he actually tracks that and he does mirror them. That's his strategy. And he's done very well. He made $300,000 the other day, just a week ago, which was awesome. Now, if you can do it with 12, you could do it with 120,000. Uh, yeah, I mean, up to a point. So for me, I like teaching people with small accounts. Um, my strategy really is not scalable. As I learned with my hedge fund, you can't make more than a few million dollars because these these companies are tiny and they're slippage. Like if you buy too big of a position, you're buying a stock that's 20% up than what it was, you know, just a few minutes or a few hours ago. So I like trading small. I say, you know, trade like a sniper as opposed to like a, you know, the British red coats where they just march in uniform. I'm like an American gorilla fighter in the trees. That's my analogy. That's a bomb. Drop that bomb. Hey, plus, plus you build schools. 107 schools so far. The goal is a thousand plus. Is, are they all outside the country? Uh, some inside, but mostly outside. I mean, I'm rich. I'm not that rich, but you what, can really help the world. What's your What's your uh, reason behind schools? Um, education. You know, like a lot of these countries, when you go to Bali or Laos or Nepal, uh, you know, Indonesia, Guatemala, Ghana, um, Cuba. Have you uh, been to them all? Brazil. Yeah, I've been to 130 countries now. You so. love traveling. I do. Do you have a big pack you travel with? just got my backpack and I got like another bag back at the hotel, but no, I mean like a group. Oh, um, I mean, I, so I have a charity now it's called Karmagawa and we bring uh, different photographers, videographers to document the schools and the different causes. We made three documentaries so far, saving the shark, saving coral reef, saving rhino. Um, so we're building schools, but then 
schooling is like a multi-decade effort. A lot of these animals, endangered species, they don't have decades. So we're trying to use that. I mean, we got 1.5 million followers on Instagram. People want to help the world. They just need guidance. So if I'm, if I'm listening to this show, I'm thinking to, in my mind, like, why doesn't everybody do this? I mean, they should. <laughs> I'm, I'm fortunate. I found what I loved, right? Like if you had told me a decade ago, you're going to donate all your trading profits to charity. All your new DVDs is going to go to charity. Like I have, this is charity merch that I'm designing made out of half plastic, half con- like, I'd be like, what are you, what are you talking about? But I found, I love this stuff and now I'm just pushing it. Everyone at the conference today where they're like, how do you have so much energy? I got like three hours of sleep a night. A, I'm drinking coffee, but B, I love what I'm doing. It's so much of an honor to be real in an industry full of fakes. You have no idea how many snake oil salesmen there are. Oh, I'll teach you to be rich. I'll teach you to be rich. They've never been rich themselves or been self-made. They've never actually created millionaires. My students and I show every trade publicly. I love my haters because they drive me so much more. I'm like, oh, you hate me? Come on, give it to me. Bring it on. I'll just teach more. You, I'm just going to create more video lessons. It'd be a dumb question to say you have ha- haters because if course. you have 1.5, you're going to have them. But do you have like real haters, stalker haters? No, I mean, I listen, I show every trade. It's, it's really tough to hate on me. I always ask the haters. I was like, what's your conspiracy theory? Like, am I hiding trades? Am I not actually donating to charity? But all the charity donations are public. All my tax documents are public. All my trades are public. This is what we were talking about. Like, Come at me. I love this stuff. I have nothing to hide. And I stay conservative. Again, I can make more money trading. I could probably do more that way and be more aggressive. But I like trading volatile stocks in a safe way. I think that there's a lot of opportunity for the average person to think that way. So you you make income from many other things besides trading. Teaching. Teaching is my business. Because you can't you can't necessarily donate it all and then sort of, you know, live well. Correct. Because you're on the Amalfi Coast. So the Amalfi Coast. Exactly. Um but Teaching is my business. I'm very open about that. You know, we do over $10 million uh, per year, sometimes even 20 or 30 million, depending on the market. Um, and that's my, my job. I prioritize my students. Like if you say, look, Tim, you're going to make a lot of money trading, but how are my students going to do? I used to short sell a lot of scams, right? A lot of pump and dumps. That's where a lot of haters came from because I would like expose scams. They didn't like that. I could profit more shorting scams, but could my students do it? No, there's not that many shares to short. It wasn't a a great business for teaching people when they can't partake in the strategy. The strategy I do now, anybody can do it if they study. So I've adapted, maybe trading profits are a little less for me, but again, I donate all my trading profits to charity, and now my students are having more success. So my interests are aligned with my students. There's some people who are like, oh, you make more money from teaching than trading. Actually, correct. I make nothing from trading because I donate it all. That's the beauty of this business model. I don't care how much I make from trading. I show you every trade because I want people to learn the process. And it's crazy, but this is what I've come up with. Same thing with the new DVDs. We, we sometimes had free DVDs. People wouldn't watch it because there was no money invested. There was nothing, there was, there was no real reason. Even if it was a free DVD, even if it was good, they didn't really watch it. We started charging for the DVDs. People started watching it because now they're on the hook with their money. Teaching is counterintuitive, but we, we do it. Do you uh, have a home? <laughs> um, I mean, I bought my parents a place down in Miami, so I go back to Miami every now and then, but I travel all the time. I did 32 countries in 2019 before the pandemic. This year, probably going to be close to 30 countries too. Yeah, because I always see you. You're always out and about. I'm, I'm like, where's your home? You don't have one? The world. Why do you need a home? This is the digital revolution. I want to show people, especially now with Starlink, Elon is putting it everywhere. It just got approved in Philippines. Philippines internet, not so great. Now Starlink is coming. Fucking rock on. See, now what stock should I be looking at? I mean, Starlink doesn't have a stock, but if it did, I would invest in it. I think that's a great company. Anything Elon does, like he thinks a little differently, but he creates great products. He puts the consumers first. I think a lot of business people can learn from Elon. Too many people are worried about margins, squeezing little things. Just create great products. Then you don't have to spend money on marketing. Your profits go up eventually. And this is what Elon has said. I mean, in interviews, he's like, I don't really care how much we make. We're creating good products. We're profitable. People love us. And that's their legit reason. You know, Tesla uh, cars actually increased in sales during the Super Bowl. They didn't have any commercials, but his competitors had commercials. People Googled and they initially immediately found Tesla and Tesla has the best product. So other companies are advertising their products, but because Tesla is superior, they win. 
Same thing with me. Like if you've Google stock trading or penny stock trading, there's a lot of people who do it. No one has as many millionaires as I do. No one shows all their trades, donates, builds schools. Go to my competitors. Good luck. Go trade with crypto. Go lose all your money. Go use leverage. Come back to me with a better attitude. If anybody comes to me with a bad attitude, I'm like, good luck. Come back to me when you lose enough. That's the beauty of knowing when you have a superior product. Do you think, uh, Do you, yeah. Do you think Elon knows he can manipulate the stocks with a tweet? I think he knows that he has a lot of influence. I wouldn't use the word manipulate. I again, like he'll he'll debate legal, lawyers will debate debate it. I know he knows his power and I think he has fun with it. He's like, you know, the richest guy in the world. Fuck it. Like have fun with it. I, I would say he's the most influential dude on earth. Hundred percent. He gave a conference call during one of Tesla's conference calls. He's like, I think our stock is overvalued. And it was like, what does that mean? Is it really overvalued or is he luring in short sellers? Because right when he said that, the stock dropped. People are like, wait a minute, the stock is overvalued? The CEO just said that. A lot of short sellers piled in, creating an epic short squeeze over the next few months. Did he think that it was overvalued or did he want to lure in the short sellers? You don't know, but it worked. But I'm wondering, like, does he know? He's got to know. He's a smart dude. He's the, one of the smartest. So how do you see? So again, like that's technically, you know, I'm not a lawyer. I don't, I don't want to do that. But for me, and, and I like Elon, don't get me wrong. I listen, if someone does shit legally, like I said, those, those, those legislators or whoever gets to inside trade without going to jail. Yeah. Good for them. Like if you want, if you, you know, I'm not mad at him. I'm not mad at Elon, but I'm just wondering, like, he's got to know he can tweet something and make a, half a billion dollars. I think he likes to play with it. Like he said, you know, te back when Tesla stock was low, he's like, Oh, we have a takeover offer at 420. He was just making like a weed joke, but then, you know, he got in trouble. Like, did he actually have a takeover rumor? Like that's, that's some, some borderline stuff. Um, and it's, it's still being debated. He said that there was a takeover offer, but he makes a lot of weed jokes. I mean, he can do whatever he wants and he can have fun with it. He pays a $20 million fine, $25 million fine. It's like a parking ticket for him. So isn't that crazy? I, I mean, that's, but again, that's the power of having a superior product because he knows he has a superior product. I still think he probably shouldn't even be on Twitter. I think it's holding him back from creating more superior products. So he, maybe he's having like a midlife crisis or he's, you know, he needs a little entertainment. So he puts stuff on Twitter and sees how people react. Did that deal go down with Twitter? Um, it's still in the process. They're still going over, uh, the pricing. Cause he says that there's a lot of bots. They're saying there's not that many bots. He says this matters. They say, no, stick to the price. So it's like, he said, she said, it'll drag on for a little while. Unfortunately, hmm. you know, I wish he wasn't on Twitter. Like Twitter is very dangerous for egotistical people because they want to hear their voice heard. They want to like, see what other people say that makes them feel more powerful. He should just build great products. If he was just quiet. I mean, I think he would be more successful. Who, who in the stock world do you think is kind of more your style? Nobody. I have my own style. I don't think anybody else likes penny stocks or, you know, is very meticulous or, or conservative. Like you said, you take on a lot of risk. I'm trading penny stocks. I'm day trading, but I'm doing it in like a safe manner. I have a whole video lesson where I talk in a high pitched voice. I'm like, I'm a castrated choir boy. This is how I trade. And people are like, what are you talking about? But that's how I trade. And I think that's a good way for the average person. Because you have to understand, like you said, like Warren Buffett, Munger, you know, Elon Musk, Mark Cuban, you look up all these great investors, like they're doing it to maximize their own trading profits, their own investment profits. I'm doing this as a teacher. I don't think anybody has ever done that, donating all their trading profits, focusing on their students. For me, it's about education. And you know, it's not about like, who's the best trader, who's the best investor, who's the best teacher. I don't even know who the best teacher is anymore. The, the teachers don't get awards. They should. I wish there was like uh, an Academy Awards for teaching. That's yes, what I yes, want. Yes, they win. should. They, they influence the youth. The youth influences the world. I wish that we had more teachers who weren't so underpaid or, you know, underutilized. Well, again, if I'm a teacher, listen to this teach me to do what you do and I'll freaking do it. hundred percent. Let's get the teachers. Let's get the teachers out more powerful. There seriously should be an award show for teachers. Fuck these. Like, sorry for my language, but you have like these narcissistic actors and, and actresses and like, they're basically given scripts. Okay. You can read a script well, and then you dress up and you put all this stuff on and like everyone worships you versus teachers who spend their whole lives earning 
hardly anything. And they're influencing dozens, if not hundreds, if not thousands of people. And yeah. that is the future. If we get better teachers, we have a better future. That's what I wish would happen. What do you think about Forex? Uh, <laughs> again, 90% of traders lose. Forex is a rich person's game. Like you have like the, the most sophisticated traders because with that, unlike penny stocks, I trade in like this small little niche. It's like basically me fishing in a little pond. Forex is deep sea fishing and you're competing against George Soros, all these, you know, algorithmic traders, all the smartest people who go to all these fancy colleges. I know I'm not that smart. I'm not that good at math. And I think the average person should realize that, you know, I know everybody's mother says like, oh, you're special. No, you're not. I'm sorry. Your mother lied. We're the average people in the world. I'm sure there's a few special people out there, but the average person should not trade against George Soros or in a game that they can't win you, very often. There's yeah. no edge. Even if you're average, you're still better than half the people out on the planet. Yeah, but the average trader loses. So 90% of traders lose. The people who win are above average. So in order to be above average, you have to be very fucking special. You don't have the news. You don't have the capability. You don't have the math skills. You don't have the multi-million dollar computer programming. These, these computers are faster than, than people. You can't compete with that. That's Forex. They don't trade in penny stocks. There's not enough money to be made. That's why it's low hanging fruit. I make a few thousand dollars here or there. My average trading profit is just around $2,000. You got a kind of a Seth Rogen vibe, don't you? Well, I'm Jewish and I have curly hair and I'm a little overweight. So thank you for that. Do, do people tell you that? Yes. Well, it's interesting. So I go up and down based on how much I eat when I'm fat. People say, you know, you look like, and I'm like, who? And they're like Seth Rogen. But when I really work out, I'm like, you know who you look like? And I'm like, no, who? And they're like Ben Affleck. So it's either Affleck or Rogan. Right now you're catching me. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a right, right now you're Flogan. Uh, I'm a little of both, but you know, again, for me, the past two years have been crazy. Um, just because my number of millionaire students have quintupled so many new people are coming into the trading game. Um, it's pretty crazy. Not even just the money that you could have made in 2021. Now it's like protect, 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 and still learn how not to lose your ass in 2022. So I've been a little busy the past few, two years. So if I want to do this for a living and pay my bills, let's say I'm, I need, I need 10 grand a month to pay my bills. Yeah. So I need to make 10 grand a month that I can take every month. Yeah. What seed capital would I need to start with? Don't trade my strategy. You can't mix real world uh, responsibilities with trading profits because I don't know if this is going to be a hot or cold market. There might be a cold market and there's not many plays. You have to understand, I let the plays come to me. This is how crazy I am. Even though I trade almost every day, I think of myself as a retired trader. I'm only going to come out of retirement, fucking Tom Brady style. When there's a play that's so good, I would feel guilty missing it. And this counterintuitive thinking keeps me on the sidelines until there's a good trade. If I had responsibilities to pay 10 grand, 20 grand, 50 grand, child support, you know, tax bills, whatever... I would be looking for trades all the time. It would flip the formula. I would be desperate to trade and I would take worse trades. Mm. So I don't want anyone trading with money that they need to live. Like you don't want to be like on the last day of the month, rent is due the next day. You're like, what trade should I take? There might not be a great trade. For me, I'm not trading, you know, Amazon, Facebook, Apple, where there's so much trading going on every day. People are like scalping for like 1% or 0.1%. Um, I'm taking good plays when there's something in play, when there's some momentum, whether there's some, you know, market may, uh, moving news or there's a pattern that I recognize. Um, you know, there's basically like 15,000 stocks in my universe. So I'm watching them all, but I boil it down to a watch list of like 30 stocks. A lot of these stocks trade over and over again. And like the same kinds of plays run up, like with Roe v. Wade, DGLY, they make uh, these cameras for police officers. So the thinking is, if there is going to be protests this weekend, police officers will be involved with citizens. You're going to need the little camera on the police officers. So DGLY stock spiked 20% today. Every time there's civil unrest, DGLY spikes because everyone's always like, oh, these police need more co body cameras. So this is how I look. I don't look to trade. I don't need to trade. But if something that I recognize, a pattern or a trend comes to me, I come out of retirement. Tom Brady. Who, uh, it says, what you don't have any relation to Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> no. Um, I called him out on it, though, because he still owes his victims $100 million. A lot of his victims committed suicide, lost everything. Their families were devastated. I think that's kind of shady. 
But, um, well, sure. you know, when the movie came out, everyone wanted to trade penny stocks. So I do owe him a thank you. I have like this love hate relationship. What did, what did he, promoters. what did he do that was illegal? Like explain it. Cause I've, I've watched the movie, but I don't totally get what he did that was so illegal. Well, have you seen the other movie boiler room? That was also based on his life. That was told from the victim standpoint. Yes. So that's a sadder movie bombed the drug celebrity, you know, beautiful life movie was a hit. That's so it's a whole take on America. But what he did was basically pump and dump. He pumped up these stocks saying, this company is going to go to the moon, very similar to crypto. Um, and people bought it. Unfortunately, a lot of the companies he promoted were false. Um, they weren't real companies. They were scams. Did he know that though? Yes, 100%. But he didn't care. Like he, a lot of these- Why didn't he just pick a legit company? Because no one will buy those companies up that much. Legit companies are already more expensive. He's picking stocks at 10 cents, 20 cents, 50 cents. And he's taking on the most financially naive. Very similar to what crypto promoters have done. You know, you promote all these little cryptos. Look, we're changing the world. This is amazing. And then it goes up so much because so many people buy it. This is why crypto promoters and, you know, penny stock promoters say never sell. They don't want their house of cards to collapse. And they, you know, say, look... I'm just doing what everyone else is doing. You know, the whole world's a scam. Everything's a pump and dump. Unfortunately, it's not. And, you know, he got busted. What about the Steve Madden thing? So he actually, so this is the crazy thing. Every now and then there is a real company in penny stocks. Um, it's actually pretty amazing. Like, yeah, like it's crazy that almost every penny stock is a scam, but not every single one of them. Okay. So there might be like one out of a thousand or two out of a thousand that actually make it. Steve Madden, the shoes took off, right? Think about that. The shoes actually took off, but because they did all this kind of complicated accounting, which basically enhanced their position and it was turned out to be a scam. Enhance their position or enhance their value? Enhance their, they took on more shares. So they kept selling more and more shares that they didn't necessarily exists, right? So they're, they're pump again, it's pumping and dumping, but even if the product is real, they're using complicated uh, accounting to kind of enhance their position so they can make more money. And Steve okay. Madden actually went to jail, great shoe designer. And he went to prison. So that's, that's the illegal part that the Jordan and his gang did. Yeah. I mean, again, I'm not like a lawyer. I don't even get into all that. I know that he was convicted. They were all convicted. Um, there's a lot of fancy accounting that you can do to make it look like, guess what? We're not doing anything illegal, but if you get caught, you're, you're doing that. I don't want to deal with anything complicated. Right. I like momentum trading. I don't want to deal with it. Well, I, when I watched the movie, you know, you, you just think, oh, they're just kick-ass salespeople talking people into buying shitty stocks that, hey, you know, you shouldn't be buying shitty stocks in the first place. But then again, I didn't know he was aware that this company was fake. Yeah, I mean. Because if that's the case, like that, she should go to prison. That's a, and they that's did. A scam. They all did go to prison and that's fine. Like you, you do your, you know, your time. But the problem is you don't get the money back for the victims. No, you don't. So he still owes a hundred million. He started like an Australian company um, so that he didn't have to pay it back. And like, again, now he says he's like scot-free, but I get, I get messages from like victims of all these scams. I write about all this stuff. I expose it on my blog on timothysykes.com, but people don't read it fast enough. So like with the weed stocks, I wrote like, this is all a scam. This is all pump and dumps. Yes, weed is getting legalized, but these companies are not the right companies. People don't read it. The promoters get the word out fast because they spend, you know, huge media budgets. Um, then the people lose everything and they start Googling. And they find my blog post six months later. They message me and they say, oh, I wish I would have seen that. I have no money now. And I say, go watch my free YouTube videos. At least learn for the next time. What's your YouTube channel? It's just Timothy Sykes. Folks, there you go. You want a heads up. You want a freaking almost a crystal ball you got freaking timothy reading the future for you 1500 videos it's not fun though to like expose the scams i'm like the guy who like busts up the party you know all these stocks are up so much and i'm like no not everything is kosher and they're like shut up stop being that guy but you ever get threatened um, I used to. So like when I was short selling, I mean, I would expose a lot of scams. The scammers weren't fans of being exposed. Um, but again, I got out of that, not because it wasn't profitable, but because it wasn't good for my teaching. Even when I, let's say I shorted a stock betting on lower prices, I exposed the scam. I'm like, yo, this is going to go down and it does. And I I'm right ahead of time. I would get people who cancel. And I was like, yo, I just called this. This stock just dropped 30%. People couldn't find shares to short. It's a, it's a little more uh, of a difficult trading strategy to short sell. So 
I got away from that. I got a, a cease and desist letter from Shaquille O'Neal. He pumped up one of these penny stocks. And I wrote all these blog posts like red flag after red flag in the SEC filings, which are legally required filings. It was all like obviously a scam. And I was like, Shaquille O'Neal, I don't think Shaq knew. They're not like, you know, so a lot of celebrities are not exactly financially proficient. But there was a mailer that said Shaq is going to pump up sales. In effect, there were no sales. He pumped up the stock. The stock crashed. Shaq's uh, cease and desist letter, you know, disappeared. Mm. It didn't really matter. I was going to go on TMZ. It was actually, you know, I don't know if you remember when uh, Tiger Woods, uh, the whole sex scandal broke. This was years ago. And I was t going back and forth with TMZ to get my Shaquille O'Neal um, cease and desist letter on TMZ Sports. And after like two weeks, I was like, all right, we're going to do this. And then the Tiger Woods news broke. No Shaquille O'Neal news. I basically say that I was like the last one fucked by Tiger Woods. That's funny. It's true. I would have been great. But again, it doesn't matter. I'm not angry at Shaq. I'm not angry. I exposed Justin Bieber. Um, what do you he mean? He pumped up a lot of these stocks. What did he do? He pumped up a stock. You know, one of these penny stocks. How do they do that? Because they believe in the product. They don't know. Again, they... Celebrities are not the most uh, financially aware. They have managers, they have agents, they have you know lawyers. So for me, I'm looking at the deal that these celebrities do to pump up these stocks. The penny stocks go up five, 10, 20 times in a few days. Then they inevitably crash because they're all up just on promotion. They use Bieber's image, they use Shaq's image. This was years ago, um, but they always crash, you know, 99 to 100%. Well. Tiger Woods actually got involved with a penny stock pump and I had to call him out too. I don't like doing it, but all these stocks just crash. Well, so what are you looking for then? Cause like if I heard Bieber or some celebrity and I'm a fan, I'm, you know, that's obviously if you're a believer. Yeah. It's going to influence me, <laughs> 100%. But, but, but it's just, it's just the promotion that Bieber's doing. That's making it go up. What, yeah. what should be making it go up? Like you're looking for ones that are really doing that. How do you know which ones are really doing that? Are you looking at financials? What are you looking 100%. at? percent. So SEC filings versus press releases. SEC filings are long, boring legal filings, but they talk about all the financial deals. How much money does a company actually make? What are they making per product sold? Justin Bieber basically did a whole PSA on this company. Uh, they had a technology that prevented you from uh, texting while you're driving. Sounds amazing, right? Justin Bieber has a lot of young fans. You shouldn't text while you drive. Sounds amazing. If you go into the SEC filing as opposed to the press release, you find out that the company didn't even own the text messaging technology. They licensed it from a Chinese company and they were losing money on every single unit sold. Why would they do that? That's bad business because they were hoping that Justin Bieber could sell enough of them. Even if they had losses, they could show their revenue was growing so much they would raise some money and then buy another technology with that. So, you know, again, Justin Bieber didn't do anything wrong, but all you had to do was look at the SEC filing. You see what's going on. They never sold enough. Of course, the company went bankrupt. You know, Justin Bieber's fans got screwed. And, you know, this is what I used to do. This was over a decade ago, but there's no real profit in short selling or, you know, making angry fans. I had a lot of believers hitting me up because we were like on Yahoo Finance and MSN Money being like, stock trader, like calls out Justin Bieber. You know, like those weren't the headlines I wanted. Now I'm teaching people to ride the momentum, expect the worst out of everything. You're just trading the news. You're trading whatever's hot. Okay. You can short sell. There's a lot of Chinese scams in the market. A lot of my students have been shorting those. Um, we don't get so in depth anymore. Now it's just trading. How can you use this knowledge to grow your account in a safe way? That's the goal. What do you think makes the stock more valuable? Is it the, is it the profitability of the company? Perception. No, it's not the profitability. A lot of the best performing companies have no profits whatsoever, but fast growing revenues, maybe like a, a fast uh, growing software company. Like, you know, Instagram, when they got taken over by Facebook, they were not profitable. They only had a few dozen employees. They had no profits whatsoever, but they had a very popular app. When Facebook took them over, Facebook introduced all these premium uh, features, all this advertising that created the business. So sometimes it's not just about profitability, it's what's popular and and what can someone do to the business? What is the value of that business? Instagram was worthless, technically, on a profit uh, speaking. So, you know, so why did Facebook buy them? Because they knew what they were going to do with it. They were going to turn into an ad machine. They were going to introduce premium features. And now Instagram is worth you know tens of billions of dollars. So it was actually a good buy. I mean, they, they bought it for basically a billion. Everyone laughed. Everyone's like, why are you buying this company? They don't make any money. 
in today's world is not necessarily about how much money you make is what can you do with the users? What can you do with the product? So for me, I trade most of these stocks are not uh, profitable companies, but if they're involved in, let's say, energy, energy is spiking uh, lately, even like food prices, coffee prices, uh, monkey pox, you know, crypto, like anything with a story where you can say, wait a minute, this has legs. Does this company, does this product, does this sector have legs? And that's what I'm looking for. And the beautiful thing with low price stocks, nothing spikes all at once in one hour or one day. The best runners take two, three, four, five, six days. So even if you're there on day two, you don't have to necessarily be there in minute one when the news comes out. But I do like being there on a Friday and then the media hypes it up and then I sell on a Monday or Tuesday. That's the inefficiency because the stock market is closed over the weekend. If I went to your classes, would I learn that in, yeah. a, in a course? Yeah, you would be endlessly frustrated at how inexact this is in the beginning. None of my top students make a million in year one. You know, Tim Grittani, 1,500 into 15 million. He made nothing his first two years, but he's learning. So for me, I have to teach example after example. Like maybe I'm a little too early on monkeypox. Maybe I'm too aggressive on energy. It's not an exact science. So it's always like a moving target and you got to find what works best for you and what works best in the market. So really I say anybody who wants to be my student, be ready to commit three years because the first year you might be confused, especially uh, in a market like this. But I tell people to start small. You can paper trade like you don't have to use real money. It's like fantasy sports, but you're actually learning what stocks move, what stocks don't move. You can go in with a thesis. You can say, look, I think, you know, gold prices are going to surge. Let me buy this gold stock. And then you find out that gold stocks don't really move that much. You know, it's good to learn. That's yeah. the whole point here. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, dude, the, nothing beats learning, right? But understanding that part of the process of learning is being frustrated in the beginning. And a lot yeah. of people don't do that. A lot of what I do is just perception, right? Like you need to understand that this is a marathon and not a sprint. Everybody's like, oh, how do I make a million dollars in year one? I'm like, I don't know. I teach a process that can benefit you. How do you maximize 2022 to be ready for 2023, 2024, 2025? I said this at my boot camp. I was like, how many of you are going to make 2025 the best year ever? And they're like, what? <laughs> but that's the reality. You got to think about this. If you're going to make life changing money, it's going to take time. That was the biggest bomb of all right there. But you got to plant might, the I might, I might have to borrow that from you. Do it. It's all yours. Well, that's a smart one because again, you know, most people are too, you know, worried about tomorrow. Like, you know, you're going to be three years from now, no matter what. I was just having a conversation out on the balcony earlier. Guy had a little bit of a limited mindset and, you know, I'd say, well, why don't you just, you know, go virtual? Oh, you can't. I'm like, what do you mean you can't? I know people that are doing it. Yeah, but it's difficult. See? And I'm like, well, dude, you got to bust through that. Anything worth doing is, is going to be a little difficult, especially in the beginning when you're trying new stuff, when you're pushing yourself. I told the boot camp, I said, prepare as if you're an Olympian, right? Olympians train so hard for that one event that's four years away. This is a little different than sports. You don't have like a limited shelf life. Like you don't have to be amazing by age 30 or 25. The best traders, the best investors I know are 50, 60, 70. They have decades of experience. And then they use that decades of experience to be better prepared on every trade and investment. And even though it takes time, folks, time's going to pass one way or the other. So you want to be somewhere in five years or no? You can't control the market, but you can control your preparation. That's all you can control. See, that's what that guy was talking about. Because I, because he said, basically, that takes too long. And I'm like, too long for what? He was I, talking about building a brand. Because <laughs> if you build one for real, I mean, other than luckily going viral somehow. And I'm still building mine, but I think I've built one. And it's taken me three or four freaking years of constant freaking posting, you know, having a camera guy follow me around, paying editors to edit it up, you know, but after, you know, three or four years now, it's starting to get pretty decent. And that influence, because they're real, is powerful shit. Trust, dedication, and patience. And people start to see which brands are real who is real over time. There's a lot of fly by nighters like, Oh, look at all this crypto. And then they're millions, if not billions in one year, next year, they're out of business. The most success takes a little longer, but you keep, you know, building your content. You keep doing more and more year two, year three, like, Oh, he was right about this. You start seeing examples. You start seeing testimonials. I get a lot of my top students and I'm like, what, 
what makes you still go through all the hoops, all the frustration in the beginning when you're losing month one, month two, month six, month 12. And they see other students in the community and they're like, if he can do it or she can do it, I have my first female millionaire student, then I can do it too. And some people are like, oh, those are paid actors. If you see some of my millionaire students, I would hire better actors. Like they they can barely speak. It's like Dustin Hoffman and Rain Man, okay? I hire no actors, they're real people. But it's true. If anyone can do it, you can too. It's all a question of desire and how much work you're willing to put in. Are you willing to study at 11 p.m., midnight, 1 a.m.? Or are you going to go watch Netflix or, you know, go to the club and waste money and drown your sorrows in alcohol? It's up to you. What is the best location you've ever found? For food, romance, business, history? You tell me. Just like adventure? Well, yeah, each one of those. How about, uh, how about food? Food is Japan. I love Japan. I'm obsessed with it. Tough for business though, because I'm trading U.S. stock market hours 10 p.m. till 5 a.m. It's rough. Where in Japan? Tokyo. Tokyo is amazing. Has everything. Uh, you can go an hour and a half by speed train to Kyoto. You get the, all the history. All these restaurants. All these places are four or five hundred years old. We can't even comprehend that in America. Wow. It's a blast from the past. So Japan for food. Yeah. And what Italy. about romance? Italy too. Romance? Ooh, I love Napa. I love South Africa. Um, Napa? Yeah, Napa Valley. California? Yeah, man. Does it, that compare with all the exotic places? 100%. For me, I don't know. I love like meeting, like going to the vineyards, meeting with the restaurateurs, like farm to table type stuff. I like that. I mean, it's up to, to everybody, but I love that. Italy too. I'll go with Italy just because the people are amazing. The culture is amazing. The food, um, the nature, towns like Positano, the Amalfi Coast, South Africa. What town should I see on, on the Amalfi Coast? Positano, my favorite city in the world. Come by this summer. I got a place if you want. Positano. Come through, yeah. Is that the one with all the colorful houses on the hillsides? Exactly. And so you eat a lot, but then you have to walk up 400 steps to get back to your villa. So it's like a forced workout. It's amazing. But you can stop off. Like I stop off for like, you know, some lemon chilla or like a coffee along the way. And I'm just looking out and I'm like, this is beautiful. Is it all, is it all up? Yeah, it's a very, ver- down. very vertical town. It used to be like a fishing village, but then they painted it. Celebrities started going and now it's just magical. Positano. Positano. Now, now what's one, one last one? Um, history. I mean, I love Greece. Like if you look at how our culture is influenced, I mean, Greece just is, is the bare basics for everything like democracy, literature. I mean, so much of our stuff is influenced by Greece and in the Greek empire. Um, I mean, Italy has it too, but Greek for me, that's, that's the amazing place. So I'm doing this summer, uh, France for fashion week. Cause we got this charity brand, uh, for sustainable clothing. Then I'm going over to Italy. Then I'm going over to Greece. I love trading from Europe. The U S stock market is open three 30 or four 30 in the afternoon till 10 PM. So I wake up at noon. Amazing. Go for a swim, get a nice lunch prepared by 2 PM trading three, 3 PM to 5 PM. Go for like a workout sunset hike, go to a museum from like five to seven back trading eight to 10 late night dinner, 10 to midnight out of the club or the bar midnight to 2 AM wake up at noon, do it all over again the next day. How perfect You're is not that? married? No, I'm not. I'm married to my job. I almost got married. I almost got married in Positano, actually. Well, that sounds like a, 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 a good life. I don't know if you want to get married and ruin that shit. It's not bad. I don't know. I mean, listen, you everyone- You won't be doing that married. Everyone has their different goals. For me, I love to travel. I love to teach. I can't do too much. Like there, I'm already spread pretty thin with trading, with traveling, with charity. Um, but I love it. You know, you, you got to find what really motivates you. And, you know, if you like being married, that's fantastic for you. For me, I'm doing what I love. Well, I appreciate you coming by. No, thanks for having me. Folks, if you're a wise individual, I'd go to timothysykes.com, start looking into this fella. If you already know who he is, well, then you're welcome. I don't know how I got you on the show, but I'm glad I did. I know that uh, anybody that's, that's, that's thinking in their head, you know, there's got to be a way. I think it's this one. Because again, I mean, you can do this shit part time. You can do this. You can learn part time. You don't have to quit a job. You just get yourself educated. Might take you two or three years, but two or three years from now, now you've got a way to stay out of the bud. And by the way, last question. Yeah. What about 
the recession coming? Do you think there's anything or here? Do you think there's anything anyone should or could do to protect themselves any better? Be grateful. Be grateful for the slow period. It gives you more time to study. I hope the recession lasts 2023, 20, 2024. Everyone is playing a game of catch up. What they don't understand is that you have so many tools at your disposal on the internet. You can study so much history and be better prepared when the recession or the depression or the crash or whatever is over so that by 2024, 2025, you're like, I'm ready. If there's no recession, if everything starts bubbling up right away, it's really tough to focus on studying because you're like, ah, I'll study another time there's money to be made. What people don't understand is that the most money you'll make is if you're better prepared as soon as possible. And this is tough. But that's the reality. So if there's a recession, again, you can't control the recession. You can't control anything. All you can control is your preparation and your studying. The sooner you start that, the better. You done heard it here, kids. Until next time, keep it real. Thanks, Tim. No, oh, thanks. Dropping bombs with The Real Bradley. Subscribe now.